What's up guys, Asian here again with another theory crafting video and today we're going to be going over how much of a difference uh, does CP make um, in terms of amount of DPS that you're able to do. Uh, so that's a lot of, it's a question that a lot of people uh, bring up uh, both on the official forums uh, and especially on Reddit, you know. I just turned CP 160, uh, this is my DPS, uh, how much of an increase can I expect when I become you know, max CP or something like that? Um, or, you know, I'm CP 300, I'm pulling about 20k DPS, is this good for my level? Or, or some variation thereof of those two main questions there. So what I did was I did a couple of tests um, and there are um, some actual mathematics behind it. Uh, as a year before he left the game, did do some mathematics behind um, you know, CP and how it affects uh, your DPS and kind of what you can expect to see as a percentage increase uh, from using you know, certain uh, CP distributions. Uh, so we'll take a look at that and then I'll also share uh, the results that I had uh, with my tests uh, um, and when I, that I did a couple of, a couple of days ago. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just kind of show you guys what my setup was. So I'm on a Magic and Nightblade, so this was all done on a Magic and Nightblade. Um, exact same sets and everything. So now you might argue that, oh, well, a CP-160 won't have, you know, Soraria's perfect uh, set here. But the idea here is not to compare what is realistic or not for CP-160 to get. It is to compare the actual difference between, you know, champion points. So, you know, we wanted to keep gear the same uh, between all of our parses. So for that reason, none of this gear was changed at all. Uh, this was just kept out throughout the same throughout all the parses. So we'd had two pieces on, uh, medium heavy, uh, divines, max health enchant on the one piece, uh, divines on the shoulders with max magic enchant, perfect sororia, uh, divines on all the pieces with max magica. Yes, I know infused is better uh, for large pieces, but I was just kind of trying to get things done real quick, so I didn't want to like, you know, waste time transmuting. Uh, Mother Sorrow was going to be our front bar, and I had two Arcane, one Bloodthirsty, three Spell Damage enchants, and then we had uh, Infernal Staff uh, on the front bar, infused Flame Damage, and then a VMA Infernal Staff back bar, infused Weapon Damage. Uh, so that's pretty much the gear that was kept constant throughout all of our parses, uh, no matter what was going on. Uh, the only thing we changed was our CP. We never touched our gear at all. Now for our attributes, 60 Magicka, 4 Health, uh, I was using the Thief as our Mundus Stone. For food, I was using Clockwork Citrus Filet. Again, none of these were changed. The Vampirism was always stage 4, uh, so that's not, nothing here was changed at all. Then skills, again, nothing changed. The only thing that we swapped out was CP. So our front bar was Impale, Ellie Weapon, Crippling Grasp, uh, Merciless, Inner Light, uh, Fiery Rage. And then our back bar was Ellie Drain, Twisting Path, Blockade, uh, Siphoning Attacks, Rearming and Soul Harvest. Uh, so you, you notice some of these are not all the way leveled up. That's fine. Uh, again, the only thing that we changed was our CPs. And so that's kind of the next thing that I want to talk about, our champion points. So right now I have uh, the setup for CP 160. Uh, so basically what I did was um, I did a couple of different kind of checkpoints or kind of milestones, I should say. Uh, so the first one's obviously CP 160 when you hit the gear cap, and then I did CP 300, CP 450, uh, 600 and then 750. Uh, so there are five total, um, five total kind of uh, categories, so to speak. Uh, so one thing that uh, that is a little bit uh, tricky to do is when you're under CP 300, you have less resources uh, because uh, CP 300 is when you get your max resources um, from having uh, all the CP points. So that's why we went from CP 160 all the way up to CP 300. Uh, so in order to kind of replicate that, I have to take out all my points uh, and kind of put in appropriate points uh, depending on the specific um, kind of milestone that I hit. So for CP160, uh, because we don't have max resources, our DPS took a pretty big hit. And that's um, something that to be expected because you are losing a fair amount of resources. I think it's about 10% resources or so, uh, max resources, just from not having CP300, not having 100 points into your blue tree. So that's uh, kind of the, the situation here. Now, for determining how many points I'm putting into each tree, basically what I did was I did a kind of preliminary test. Uh, I did one with, so I just basically reordered it, my CPs, however I thought was going to be optimal. And then I did one parse, and then I used constellations in order to figure it out. And I made sure to adjust this mage CP points down to 200, 150, 100, whatever, you, whatever have you. Uh, and then I just you know, used whatever distribution it told me to, to, to use. And that's basically what I did there. Uh, so this was basically, um, if you are familiar with Asagir's work, this would be uh, considered optimized CP tests. So basically, I just whatever the optimizer told me to put in was what I decided to, to use for that um, specific 
um, kind of milestone hit. So for example, for CP160, this was the uh, distribution that it told me to do. 13 Elfborn, 11 LA Expert, 11 Spell Erosion, 18 Master at Arms. Uh, so you'll see that uh, I'll have it all down on my spreadsheet so you'll be able to check um, the CP points that I had down and things like that. Uh, so that's pretty much all we have to do with the, uh, the in-game portion. So now let's go ahead and hop over uh, to the... Let me just pop it up real quick. Let's head over to the uh, spreadsheet here and I can kind of go over what our findings were. So here is the spreadsheet. So you'll see here, this is the graph. This is the graph that Asayer did. Uh, I think this was back when Morrowind was on the PTS. Um, and so that's when the changes to CP distributions came about where they kind of put a lot of the, 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 the percentages on the front end. Uh, so they kind of front loaded CP. Uh, so the, uh, we have these equations here uh, that he figured out mathematically. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's not like this is the DPS you should pull. This is an ability metric. So in order to compare them, you had to basically take two ability metrics and uh, had a comparative difference between them, so you had a percentage difference there. So this bottom graph here is uh, the percentage difference uh, between all of the different, uh, basically, uh, ability metrics here. So it's calculated out here, so you can see here that we are using the optimized CP distribution here, so this is the black line here. So we used uh, 215 uh, times X plus one, uh, 112, 212, uh, and that's kind of what you see here. So. Uh, 215 times x, which is the number of made CP points we have, so 53 in this case, uh, then 11, uh, 11, 2, 2, 1, 2, and that's is the ability metric. And so down here uh, is basically a comparison of um, the ability metric. So you can see here, this is the percentage difference you would ex you would see if you were using um, Asayer's graph. Um, and then up here is the actual DPS difference uh, from our test. So again, 160, 300, 450, 600, 750, so max CP. These are, I did three tests each. And I recorded our DPS. Um, this is the average. This is the standard deviation. So you can see that uh, it, it's pretty good, uh, pretty decent overall. And as you can expect, we have we see a steady increase in our DPS going as we get more and more CP. Uh, and obviously, we see a huge jump from 160 to 300 because of the additional resources as well as the CP points. So it's kind of two factors here that that kind of account for the difference between CP 160 and CP 300. So if we take a look here, so this is the percentage difference just looking at our parses. So this is using, uh, if we take a look here, you can see it's using uh, our parse averages instead of the, uh, the, graph, the graph here. So uh, you can see here, they're just going from CP160 to CP300, you get a 13% increase. And then going from 300 to 450 is about 4.8%, then 6%, and then uh, about 3.7%. Now if we take a look at what we should expect to see, um, we can see here that um, the numbers are uh, pretty different overall. Um, from CP160 up to 300, 450, 600, 750, those are all right. Uh, you know, they're not exact, but they, they're pretty close together. Um, but if you take a look here at uh, everything underneath here, so this kind of, this, this triangle uh, section here, you'll see that there is a pretty big disparity ex for everything except the CP 450 to 600. Um, so a couple of things that might be attributed to this uh, might just be um, I didn't do enough parses. Um, is I didn't do a raid parse, so my CP optimization actually is optimized for solo parse and not raid parse. Uh, so there are a couple of things there that could explain this discrepancy here. Uh, but overall, uh, it seems that uh, at the very end here, this tail end here, uh, we're seeing uh, pretty much a similar picture when you go talking about CP160 all the way up to max CP. You're looking at about a 30 to 35% increase in DPS, just solely from CP points and obviously the um, the resource increase you get from getting up to CP300. Uh, so that's kind of what you can expect to see if you're you know, talking about DPS increase. So you know you can see here my highest parse here was 45k, uh, my highest parse um, I was CP160 was 34.5k. So if you do like about a 33% like, um, increase, uh, that'd be about you know 10k or so, 11k or so. You can see it lines up pretty well. Uh, so my max uh, was about 11k higher than my max um, with CP160. Uh, so that's kind of what you can expect here. Now in terms of these like small incremental jumps, um, once you get past CP300, it should be, in theory, mostly linear. And you can kind of see this here. Uh, it is a mostly linear line. Uh, so he has a line of best fit here and the R squared value is 0.99. So it's pretty much a very, very good fit. Uh, so this should be a linear increase. So now we see here, it's kind of um, a mixed bag here. We have about 5%, 6%, 4%. Uh, so you can reasonably expect to see maybe 5% increase uh, per 50 
mage CPs that you're getting. Now, if you worked it out, uh, every 10 would be 1%, and so every 1 would be about 0.1% increase in DPS. Now, it's not obviously going to work that way because we have jump points. Um, so that's kind of why, if you take a look here, there, it's not necessarily a smooth line. It's kind of like a, a jumping up, sort of like a stepwise function, so to speak. Uh, so that's kind of... Uh, that's why it's not really good to say, okay, every 10 CPs is X amount of increase in DPS uh, because of those jump points. You know, getting 10, 10 additional mage CPs might get you one or two additional jump points, but it might also uh, put you kind of in between jump points, so you're not really getting any additional benefit from the you know, additional CPs that you might be getting here. So the main takeaway point here is that um, I guess if you're looking at, if you just are starting off at ESO and you just hit CP160, you're just at the gear cap, you can reasonably expect to see, you know, 30 to 35 percent increase. Um, if we split the middle, it'd be about 33 percent increase in your DPS just from getting up to max CP. Uh, so that is a sizable portion of your DPS. So like I said, if you're doing 30-30k, you'll be hitting 40k uh, when you hit max CP. Um, but obviously, things like rotation make a big difference. Um, gear it makes a difference as well. Uh, so don't just say, oh, I just got to get more CP and I'll be able to do DPS and get into vet trial steam. No, that's not how it works. You still need to master your rotation. You still need to get good gear. Uh, you know, um, that's, that's all very important. So while CP does make a difference here, you know, obviously, I wouldn't consider myself the best DPS, but I'm a good DPS, especially on a mag blade. Um, but I've mastered my rotation, which is why at you know, at gear cap, CP160, I was able to pull over 30k. Um, so mastering your rotation is a lot more important than having max CP. Uh, if I can't stress this enough, um, as a new player coming in, if you want to do, uh, you know, get into PVE DPS, so you know, want to do vet trials or even the vet DLC dungeons, then mastering a rotation is going to do much more for your DPS will than grinding out CP or farming for gear. If you have a crap rotation, you're going to do crap DPS. That's what I tell everybody who comes to me for help. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it informative. And I know um, this is kind of a very uh, touch, touchy subject for a lot of people. A lot of people say, oh, CP makes a huge difference. Some people say, oh, no, CP doesn't make a huge difference. So let me, down, let me know down in the comments below if there's anything that you think that I can do a little bit better or test again uh, in order to kind of clear up some more of this. Um, like I said, Asselier did some work, and I'll have a link down in the forum post below to his work, um, his math that he did. Um, so you guys can check that out for yourself. Other than that, please let me know down in the comment section below if you have any questions or comments or any sort of feedback as to how I can better test uh, how CP affects uh, DPS. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it informative, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.